The Fates brought two malicious killers to the same prison, where they became friends and partners in plotting one of the most insane prison escapes from a maximum security correctional facility in the town of Danimora in 2015. The entire escape took less than an hour, but it cost New York $23 million for the manhunt. The media called the jailbreak a real-life Shawshank Redemption. That's why in today's episode, we have brought before you the true story of the Danny Mora escape. Without further ado, let's discover more details about the most insane prison escape. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Richard William Matt was born on the 25th June 1966 in Buffalo suburb of Tonawanda, New York. His biological father was a criminal who had a history which included assault and burglary and he is now believed to be dead, so that the kid was raised by foster parents. As a child, Matt had a bad reputation. He used to terrorize kids in school as well as assaulting them. The thing that led his foster parents to send him to a group home where he gained his notoriety as a thief in his early teens. But he decided to escape from the institution to go on his life as a criminal. Years passed and Matt grew up with his criminal passion, which led him to serve recurrent prison terms in the 1980s and 1990s because he was involved in several crimes including burglary, theft, rape, as well as assault. But this didn't stop him from committing two murders. He was brutally eager to make money without any effort. At one point, he thought that his 72-year-old former boss William Rickerson had access to a large sum of money, so he decided to involve his accomplice Lee Bates in the operation, which would include kidnapping and killing. So that the 3rd of December 1997, the two criminals attacked Rickerson in his North Tonawanda home, demanding the location of the money and forced him into the trunk of Lee's car. The two kidnappers drove to Ohio and came back in more than 24 hours, with the old man in the car's trunk. While they were on the road, they stopped several times to beat him, until at one point, Matt broke Rickerson's neck with his bare hands and killed him. Then he threw the body in a river and fled to New York State. After a short period of time, Matt could manage to cross the US-Mexican borders and was able to make it into Matamoros City. While in there, he needed money to save his life, so that as usual, he wanted to get some money without efforts. The thing that turned into committing a second murder when he was in a bar, while an American citizen man named Charles Arnold Pirot went to the restroom where he would lose his life. Matt pursued him and stabbed him multiple times with no hesitation in an attempt to rob his 300 bucks. Simultaneously, he tried to escape the crime scene, but he was captured shortly after and was convicted in a Mexican court and sentenced to 23 years in prison. While the vicious man was imprisoned in a Mexican prison, he attempted to escape, but he failed after being shot by a prison guard. His son would later state, he's been shot nine times. It's like they can't kill him. However, after he spent several years in the prison, Matt was extradited to the United States authorities on a plane in 2007 and was sentenced to 25 years in Clinton Correctional Facility in Danimora, New York, for killing Rickerson as Lee testified against him. While Matt was spending his sentence in the prison, he became friends with an inmate named David Sweat, a criminal who committed several burglaries and murdered a sheriff deputy and was sentenced to life in prison in 2002 at age of 23. The two inmates earned cells on the honor block for their good behavior and they would later request prison cells close to each other. And eventually, they got a job in the tailor shop. While they were working in the tailor shop, Matt and Sweat began planning for their escape. However, Matt managed to befriend Michelle Joss, a sewing supervisor who taught prisoners to make prison uniforms. And because the guards do not search her bag, she was able to smuggle so many tools including chisels and blades of hacksaws to the two inmates without any suspicions. 
Furthermore, a corrupted prison guard named Ginny Palmer, who used to collect Matt's artwork paintings, helped in smuggling tools and art supplies. Once the inmates got all what they needed, they started digging holes through the walls of their cells, using hacksaw blades and other tools. After breaking the wall, Sweat began routinely exploring the tunnels behind the prison walls after 11 pm check, for 85 times while planning the escape. He also managed to get a measure tape from the tailor shop, and measured Matt so as to know if he fed the pipes which led to a manhole. At one night, the two inmates slept through the holes until they reached a steam pipe which led to a manhole located two blocks outside of the prison border. Then they popped out of the manhole and went on the run. On the early morning of the 6th June 2015, during the present count, the two inmates had vanished from their cells with a note left by Matt saying, you left me no choice but to grow old and die here, I had to do something. Beside a second note, written on the wall calendar illustrated with reproduction of Matt's own artwork saying, time to go kid, 6 5 15. Sweat also left a note along the escape route that said, have a nice day with an offensive image. At the same time, the jailbreak sparked a big manhunt when it was reported that an external breach was found on a street approximately 500 feet outside of the prison wall. The authorities immediately started a wide search in the farms and fields around the town. They also increased the number of the officers around the area to more than 500. The wooden areas were also full of search teams beside helicopters wandering the town's sky in an attempt to locate the escapees before they get farther. The authorities also set $75,000 bounty for each escapee. However, a week passed and there were no sights of the escapees. But it wasn't until June 22nd when the escapees DNA were found in a cabin near Owl's Head in Franklin County and the investigators concluded the escapees had been in the cabin for the last 24 hours. Two days later, the authorities were able to spot Matt in Franklin County, New York, and he was shot and killed during the confrontation. But Sweat was still on the run after Matt's death. Four days later, on 28 June, Sweat was found and shot in the right shoulder twice during the chase near Constabletown, New York, and was transported to Albany Medical Center. While the escapees were on the run, Michelle confessed her involvement in the jailbreak and confirmed that she provided the two inmates with tools which facilitated their escape, such as hacksaws, blades, and chisels. She also added that she was supposed to pick up the escapees in her jeep when they popped out from the manhole, but she felt guilty and stepped back with further investigations. However, after Sweat's arrest, he revealed that the corrupted guard Palmer helped in the escape because he received a dozen of paintings and drawings from Matt, stating, when we do paintings, we give it to you exceptionally cheap because we know that at some point we are going to be in a bind or we might need help with something. Apparently, Palmer was an easy prey to Matt and Sweat. During the interrogation, Sweat revealed that he separated with Matt on June 23 because he was slow in him, while Sweat was in a good shape because he was able to lose 30 pounds in the prison when he was preparing for the escape. In the end, the manhunt cost New York 23 million in three weeks. Sweat pleaded guilty and was sentenced to three and a half to seven years to be served with his previous life sentence, while Joycey Mitchell pleaded guilty to promoting prison contraband and criminal facilitation, was sentenced to two and a third to seven years in prison, but she was released on a parole in February 2020. Jean Palmer pleaded guilty to promoting prison contraband and was sentenced to six months in the prison, but he was also released on parole after serving four months in the prison. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of crime and mysteries and much more interesting stories. I'll see you in the next video, take care.